Hello my sweet friends, welcome back to another video. I decided I want to film a reading vlog. I think I've only filmed one of these before, I'll link it down below. But I honestly just thought it would be fun to kind of bring you guys along for the next week or so and just update you each day, let you know what I'm reading, what I think about what I'm reading. I don't know, I just thought it'd be fun. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that I film weekly vlogs every week, but I know that not all of my subscribers want to see this sort of content. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of do a weekly vlog but like a reading version. So let me show you what I'm currently reading. I am one of those people that reads multiple books at once. A lot of people are like, Rachel, you're literally insane. But I think my brain just likes having multiple things going at once and I find that I get less bored and I actually get through books quicker because I always have something that I'm in the mood for. Does that make sense? Like I'm not forcing myself to read something that I don't feel like reading because I've got multiple books going on at once. It's just what makes sense for me and what works for me, but obviously do what works for you. I usually have one fiction, one non-fiction, and one Christian non-fiction going at the same time. So I don't usually have like a bunch of novels going at the same time. But as for my fiction, I'm currently reading Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover, her new release. I started this yesterday. I'm almost halfway through. I reckon I'll probably finish this maybe tomorrow because it's really good and it's honestly a very quick read so far. As for my Christian non-fiction, I'm reading when I Don't Desire God by John Piper. I definitely read my non-fictions a lot slower. One, because I'm trying to actually remember what I'm reading and kind of process it as I read it. But also two, they usually just don't flow as quickly as a fiction does, if that makes any sense. Um, so I've really only read a couple of chapters of this and I've been reading this for like a week or so. I definitely find it easier to read fiction, but I try and challenge myself to read at least 10 pages of non-fiction each day. So I am really enjoying this, but it is a lot to digest. So it's a very slow read right now. And then yesterday I also randomly started The Alchemist. And again, I think I read like 10 pages of this yesterday. And I'm technically using this as my non-fiction read, even though I know it's a novel, but I'm pretty sure it's more of a philosophical, reflective kind of read. So I'm using it as my non-fiction, even though I know it's not. It's about to hit 3 p.m. on Tuesday. I've just finished my work for the day. So I think I'm just gonna do a bit of reading before I kind of get into my evening routine, I guess. Um, I might go for a walk at like four. I haven't really left the house today. I normally don't read a whole lot throughout the day, but I finished work a little bit earlier than I thought I would today. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and get through some more of this. and I don't think this is even like the saddest this is gonna get. Page 140, my heart. I really like Ledger. It's a lot later now. I would say I do majority of my reading like in the evenings after dinner. I don't really watch a lot of TV, so I usually just read. I just made it to page 200 of Reminders of Him, which means I'm like two thirds of the way through. So I'll probably only read for a little bit longer tonight and then I guess we'll pick it back up tomorrow. It's the next morning. I think I have about like 20 pages left, 20 to 30 pages left. And I just wanted to document this because I'm not sure how I feel about this. I feel like I've only seen really great reviews about this book so far. And don't get me wrong, I am actually really enjoying it. However, it is so predictable. Like to the point where I'm confused because Coho always adds like a crazy plot twist in there somewhere. Like that's kind of what she's famous for. And in my opinion, this has just been extremely predictable the whole way through. So I'm documenting this now and I'll update you when I finish it and let you know if I have changed my mind or not. It's hard because if this was any other author, I'd be like, yeah, it's such a nice romance book and it is very heartfelt and it is very like deep and emotional, but I'm just expecting more from Coho. Is that bad? I don't know. I'll update you in like 20 minutes. I just finished. I am a little bit teary, but I actually mostly teared up reading the acknowledgements. I don't know if you guys read the acknowledgements, but I always do. And the first like three paragraphs of the acknowledgements is just so, I don't know what the right word is, but just like important. Why am I crying? I prefer to kind of process my books a little bit before I chat about them. So I'll probably come back and do a bit of a debrief. But my thoughts right now is, 
overall it was such a heartbreaking yet heartwarming book i will say in my opinion it wasn't as heartbreaking as some of the other books that i've read by her but i also think that if you're a mother this will hit so different i'm obviously not a mother and so i think there are just parts of this book that i wouldn't be able to empathize with to the extent that i wish i could the only thing that kind of disappointed me about this book is that it was extremely predictable in my opinion and there was no kind of plot twist or anything like that but it also made it a very wholesome read at least like the ending it was kind of just wrapped up in a nice little bow which i did appreciate in this situation because it just felt like it was needed for these characters but i don't think it's my favorite coho still very good and still definitely recommend it but i don't think it's a five star read for me but like i said i'll probably do a proper debrief later today or something all right besties time to pick out our next read because as you guys know just finished my colleen hoover book welcome to my bookshelves this room is our like spare room and it is still kind of a mess um so please ignore that but we can just focus on the books. This side is pretty much all Christian nonfiction and a little bit of non-Christian nonfiction along here. And then this side is mostly my novels. So I think I'm kind of feeling a thriller. I haven't read one in a while. This month I've read some non-fiction, some fantasy, and some romance. So I kind of want to switch it up. These are all of the books that I've read this month so far, or at least Right now it's January when I'm filming this. This might be going up in February, but these are my January reads so far. And we have about half a week left, so I'll probably only get another one or two in. Then this shelf is just like the most random shelf. There's no real theme going on here. We have some classics. We have some YA. We just have some random ones on the side here. Then we have some fantasy. Um, my Cruel Prince goes in here, but it's up there right now because I read it this month. And then I've got some other kind of mystery YA series going on um, and the secret history which just kind of seemed like it would fit here. I'm not necessarily super happy with how this is all organized yet so just accept what I've got here. Um, we have my romance shelf. Most of this is either romance or a little bit of literary fiction as well and then we have my coho, my TJR, my addicted and my Francine Rivers and then down here we have mostly like thrillers, mystery, stuff like that. I think I either want to read this or maybe one of these. Both of these were thrifted. I think I got them for like three or four dollars each. I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with Robin Harding. I've read two of her books, The Arrangement and The Perfect Family, and enjoyed both of them honestly. I actually haven't tried any of JP Delaney's books but they look very interesting, so I'll probably pick that one up soon. But I think I'm gonna start this one. Personally, I am a total mood reader. I completely base my reads on my mood. So a lot of people ask me how I choose what my next book is gonna be. Honestly, just whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Usually I don't like to read too much of the same thing in a row. So if I've read a bunch of romance, I'll try and switch it up. If I've read a bunch of thrillers, I'll try and switch it up. Unless I'm reading a series, because then it's kind of different. Some series I just wanna consume all at once, like The Cruel Prince, I read three of those in a row. And The Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I read two out of the three straight after each other but sometimes like the addicted series i like to spread it out over a long period of time so i don't know just a mood reader it's now thursday i told you guys that i was gonna start the swap by robin harding and i don't know if i've given you an update since then i'm just over halfway and i'm honestly quite enjoying it so far i feel like the first 100 pages were addicting like i was totally hooked i don't know if i would consider it a thriller at least at this point i guess it's more of a mystery i actually don't quite know um to be honest i don't quite know what the plot is and that's like the main issue that i'm having with it like i said the first 100 pages were super addicting because i feel like we were getting to know these characters and the characters are all extremely intriguing and some of them quite mysterious i would say it's kind of giving me big little lies vibes the story is set in quite a small like island beach town kind of thing um and it's kind of centered mostly around these three women one is a girl that is like in high school slash just graduated another is like an ex-influencer who got cancelled and now she makes pottery super random um and the other is a woman who owns a gift shop in the town and she sells the pottery that the 
other lady makes. You only get to hear the perspective of like the teenage girl who like just graduated high school and the store owner, but both those two women are kind of like obsessed with Freya, who is the pottery lady. There's not really any clear reason why, apart from that I think Freya is quite manipulative and makes people feel very valued, but I just don't quite know what's supposed to be happening and like what the plot is. First 100 pages, super addicting because I think we were getting to know the characters, the location, just like the situation, and I found that very fascinating. But I'm on page 177 and the past like 70 pages or so, I just feel like I don't feel like much has been going on. There has been things going on, but it's just not very clear what's supposed to be happening or what we're kind of like aiming towards or like what's gonna be happening at the end. I don't know. I'll keep you updated. I feel like because it's such an easy read, like it's quite addicting to read, I'm gonna get through it fairly quickly. But yeah, I'm just kind of like, what are we trying to get to here? I just don't quite know. It's now Friday, January 28th and I finished my next read. This is The Swap by Robin Harding. It's actually the third book that I've read by her. I've never had a five star read from her, but I've never disliked any books that I've read from her. Like she's always kind of like a safe option. I would say she gives me kind of like Leanne Moriarty vibes or even like Sally Hepworth, if you're familiar with those authors. So if you're looking for more of that like domestic thriller kind of situation and you enjoy those other authors, I would suggest checking her out. I would say that her books usually include something that's a little bit like, I don't know if controversial is the right name, maybe taboo. Like I know in the arrangement, it's all about sugar daddies in the family next door. I think one of the girls in there is like a online sex worker potentially, something like that. And in this one, it does talk about swapping partners. So look, if that's not your vibe, probably don't pick up her books, but it's also not like the whole focus of the book. Like usually there's like a murder mystery or something like that that they're trying to figure out and the taboo subjects, if you consider them that, are more like subplots, background things, but I just felt like some people would probably want to be aware of that. I think I mentioned this while I was reading it, I just felt a bit like unsure about what the point was <laughs> of the book, like when I was about halfway through. And to be honest, to give my overall thoughts now that I've finished it and like processed it a little bit, I would probably give it like three, three and a half stars. It was an enjoyable read. I feel like Robin Harding's writing is very addictive, very easy to digest. It's just like you fly through it. So if you've been in a reading slump, I think her books could be really useful because you can just kind of like fly through them, I guess, if that makes any sense. However, in saying that, just because something is easy to read does not mean it's a great book or like great literature. Again, I enjoyed it. Not a bad book but it just wasn't like crazy good to me. I thought it was definitely very unique and very interesting but if a friend came to me asking for book suggestions it's probably not one of the first books that I would recommend. But if someone asked me if they should read it I'd be like if it sounds interesting to you definitely give it a read. The main kind of like issues or things that I didn't love about this book was mostly that it just felt very messy. It almost, I'm sorry if you can hear the lawnmower outside, it almost just felt like the author had started to write this book with the first 100 pages in mind and then she got past those 100 pages and she's like, hmm, I don't really know what to do next. Oh, what about we chuck this in here? And then they would write about that. And then, oh, maybe we'll just like chuck this in here and we'll write about that. And then maybe we'll chuck this in there. And it just felt very messy. It didn't feel like there was a very big purpose to it. It was just kind of a lot of stuff thrown in. And again, I still enjoyed it but I was just kind of confused about what I should be kind of focusing on or what the plot really was. I hope that makes sense. So it was fine and it was enjoyable, but it wasn't my favorite read as of recently. I also realized that I never gave you my synopsis of Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover um, because I wanted to digest it a little bit before I talked about it, but obviously I have done that now. It's been a couple of days since and here are my thoughts. I'm gonna give it a 4.5 stars, which is an incredible rating, but obviously it's not a five stars and I have rated some of Colleen Hoover's other books five stars. So that being said, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I really, really enjoyed every single part of this book. There was not one part where I was bored or I felt like it was dragged out, but there were some things that I didn't love about it, so it couldn't be a five star for me, personally. I've seen so many people rate this five stars, and I think it's one of those things where I can see how other people would see it as a five star book, but it's just not a five star for me, personally. And 2022 is the year of making my own decisions and forming my own opinions, especially about books. I feel like when I first started reading, I was kind of too scared to say how I really felt about some books, not all books, but some books. And I'm just kind of like, no, like I'm not trying to offend anyone with my 
thoughts and opinions on the books that I read but at the same time I should be able to say when I don't enjoy a book and that shouldn't really matter. I think the whole point of reading is that everyone has books that they enjoy more than others and I would say 90% of the time if I do give a book not even a bad rating but just like a rating that's not five stars it's not because I think it's a bad book overall it's just that it wasn't a five star for me so it could be for you and I can respect that but we can have different opinions and I think that's kind of the fun of it and I think it's really fun to discuss those things anyway now I'm just going off on a tangent I'll try to make sure I don't give any spoilers because I don't want to ruin the book for a lot of people who haven't read it yet but I loved so much of this book I think the whole story was very interesting to give a very quick synopsis if you don't know what it's about we have our main character Kenna and she just got out of prison she's been in prison for the past five years and now that she's been released, she's gone to go look for her daughter, who she was pregnant with when she went into prison. And so she gave birth to that child when she was like right at the start of her sentence. And so the custody of that daughter was given to the paternal grandparents. So now that she's out of prison, she's gone to go and try and kind of like meet her daughter, find her daughter and just kind of start her life basically because I think she was 21 when she went into prison and now she's 26 so obviously has missed out on a lot of things and wants to figure stuff out but but the grandparents who have custody basically don't want Kenna to be a part of their life there's obviously so much more than just that but that is like the very basic synopsis of the book if you have no idea. I would say that Ledger, who is a love interest in this book because it's a romance so I'm not ruining anything there, is probably one of my favourite love interests from a coho book probably since Atlas potentially. I think Atlas will always be my number one and again I feel like everyone's gonna have their favourite love interest and it's gonna be different for everyone but Atlas is just like I don't know there's just something about Atlas you know he's probably just always gonna have that number one spot for me but I would say Ledger is probably taking second place now because he was just phenomenal. I really really enjoyed Ledger and I also really enjoyed Kenna's character too. Obviously we also get a bit of the daughter involved in this book and I will say that I actually quite like the way that Colleen Hoover does children. I feel like sometimes when children are involved as characters in books like this they can be extremely unrealistic and they'll say things and you're like um a four-year-old wouldn't speak like that or wouldn't say those things but I feel like Colleen Hoover does a pretty good job of making a child seem quite realistic if that makes any sense so I really really liked the daughter's character as well she was just really fun and like a little ray of sunshine but yeah Ledger was just the best. I feel like reading this I could tell that his love language was acts of service and I think that made me love him even more because that's my love language so noticing all the little things that he did for Kenna and for DM and all of the other characters in the book was just super special to me and I just loved reading about those things and yeah I just felt like the story as a whole was really enjoyable. As for the reasons why I didn't give it five stars it was like two main things. Firstly I feel like this book should have been a hundred pages longer. It's just over 300 pages which is quite short and so many of Colleen Hoover's other books are around the 400 page mark and so I just don't really know why this one wasn't a little bit longer because I feel like they could have done so much more with just even 50 extra pages. The ending just felt very rushed and I don't know if that was because of like publishing deadlines or like editing deadlines or if she just didn't really know how to flesh out the ending a little bit more or if that's just always what she intended to do with it but it just felt a little bit unfinished that ending. It just felt like it needed a little bit more to it and to be a little bit more drawn out for it to be realistic because I think since the ending was so quick it just felt a little bit unrelatable if that makes any sense. I feel like this happens in so many romance books. Things build up to be like almost perfect, something goes wrong and then they fix it and the book ends. That's just how romance books work 90% of the time I feel like but sometimes when they fix it it's like 10 pages and it's like there was this huge problem that has been building up right from the beginning and then you face the problem and it's solved in like two seconds and it's like What's even what? What was even the point of all of that build up if it was just going to be solved in two seconds? Do you know what I mean? Like it kind of needs a bit more of fleshing out in the ending and the resolution for me. Does that make any sense? So I felt like the ending could have been a little bit longer. I would have liked to hear more about the grandparents' perspective basically, without giving anything away. I would have liked to hear more from them slash their healing because I feel like they were just like very quickly one perspective to another and that just didn't really make sense for me. And secondly, one of the reasons why I love Colleen Hoover so much is because she does a great job at shocking you. She is the queen of plot twists. I feel like in so many of her books, you just have this moment where you're like, oh my gosh, what the heck? I was not expecting that. That is so crazy. That is so wild. And it's just like this moment of 
shock and it's always so good and this book didn't have that and I'm very conflicted with my thoughts about this because it's not like she has to do every book the same. Like she doesn't have to have this crazy plot twist in every book, but it is one of my favorite things about her books. And so the whole way through this one, I was expecting there to be something that was just gonna come out of nowhere and it was just gonna be crazy and it was gonna be like, oh my gosh, no way. And then it ended and I was like, oh, so there was no plot twist. And some of her other books are more in that style as well, but I would say majority of them have something like a big plot twist. But I felt like it needed that in this book because without it, it was the most predictable Colleen Hoover book that I've ever read. And even just a very predictable storyline in general, even if it was by any other author, like nothing in the book shocked me. Everything was expected and everything went how I thought it was gonna go. And that's kind of disappointing for me. So in my opinion, I wish it was a hundred pages longer and I wish that she'd thrown in a plot twist because I saw so many opportunities where there could have been one and there were so many things that I expected to go a little bit differently to kind of be a bit of a plot twist and they just didn't so there was definitely room for it if the book was a little bit longer and it was almost like she just I guess didn't want to do that and obviously it's her book and she's the author and she can do whatever she wants but I'm just curious as to why maybe she just wanted to do things a little bit differently I don't know but those are my thoughts on reminds of him 4.5 stars, thoroughly enjoyed, definitely recommend. Honestly, I feel like it could be a really great book to start on if you haven't read any of Colleen Hoover's other books and you want to start reading her novels because it's very much a standalone. I feel like there's not as many trigger warnings as some of her other books. There's definitely still trigger warnings, so maybe check those out before you read them if you think those could impact you. But as a whole, it was just a really solid, fun, heartwarming, heartbreaking read. So definitely recommend. But now it's time to go put these on my January wrap up stack that we have in the spare bedroom. Add those ones up here. Now we have to choose another book. I actually have no idea what I want to read. I don't really know what I'm in the mood for. Maybe we go for a bit of a romance. Second chance romance, anyone? Maybe we'll go with this. Try it out. I haven't really heard anyone talk about this, so I'm interested. It's now the following Thursday. I don't even remember the last time I spoke to you guys. But I think I have like 50 pages left of this book. So I'm going to try and smash it out. And then I'm going to give you my final thoughts on all of the books that I've read in the past week. At least the ones that I haven't talked to you guys about. And we can end off this video. So let's get it done. Just finished this one literally like two minutes ago. Let's pop our dust jacket back on. It is a pretty cute hardback. Hardback? Paperback. Hardcover. It is a cute book. I really like the little detail in the front. So this is Again But Better by Christine. I actually don't know how to say the last name. Riccio is my guess. Someone mentioned this in my comments when I showed it in my book haul a few videos back. They were like, oh, that the author is actually a, a YouTuber. And I was like, no way. So I looked at the about the author part in the back and I was like, oh my gosh. Like I used to watch her all the time. She was the first book YouTuber that I had ever watched like years and years and years ago. But I just didn't know her by her name because I knew her as her YouTube username, which is Poland Banana Books rather than her actual name. But yeah, she was the first booktuber that I ever watched like when I was in probably early high school. And I had no idea that she released a book. Like I didn't pick this out because I knew who the author was. I just picked it out because it was a second chance romance and it was blurbed by Colleen Hoover and Christina Lauren. My thoughts on this. I wish I loved it more than I did. Not gonna lie, it took me quite a while to get through this because I was just not enjoying it the whole way through. There were parts of it that I was really enjoying it, but there were also quite a few parts that I was bored or I was just like not into it, which sucks to say, I hate not liking a book because I want to love every book that I pick up, but I just don't think this one was for me. I feel like when you have romance books, there's cheesy and then there's cringy. And this to me was more so cringy than cheesy. And I don't like cringy. Like there were so many lines of this that I was just like, no, that is just, no, 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 no. Like just too cringy for me. But also in saying that, I think that this definitely would be one of those books that some people would absolutely adore. I think it was just not the book for me. Like I said, I did enjoy some parts of it, but just as a whole, it just isn't something that I would probably be super excited to recommend to a friend. It was just very kind of like, it was fine. 
I would say her writing gives me similar vibes to Emily Henry, that kind of just, yeah, cheesy romance, kind of quirky characters. And like, those are all good things. I don't think those are bad things. But I would say if you like Emily Henry's writing, you'd probably be more likely to enjoy this. And if you're not a huge fan of Emily Henry, this is probably not the book for you, especially if you think that Emily Henry writes quite like cheesy, cringy romances, probably don't pick this up. But I haven't even told you what it's about. Basically, we just have a girl who is in college and she travels to London to do a semester abroad and to do an internship with a magazine. She wants to be a writer. She's technically doing like a pre-med course or something um, and her parents think that she's doing pre-med but she's actually secretly doing this writing course in London and it just talks about all of her adventures there. She meets a boy but he has a girlfriend so like what are they going to do? And honestly just like don't love the fact that he did have a girlfriend. Like obviously I guess that was necessary for the story because that was what was creating like the tension or like forbidden romance kind of vibe but I just like hate it when there's a girl at home two people are falling in love but there's someone else still in the picture like that just like and to me it's just like so sad when there's like this other girlfriend at home and their boyfriend is overseas falling in love with someone else and they just have absolutely no clue because the boyfriend just like doesn't want to deal with confrontation or something like that just frustrates me a lot. So I think overall I'm going to give it three stars. It definitely wasn't bad. It was fine, but I just, it wasn't for me. I also finished The Alchemist since I updated you last. So I'll chat about that for a sec. I have heard so many people talk about this book and they've said it's just life changing. It changes their perspective on everything. It's super philosophical, insightful, lots of things like that. And so I was really intrigued to read this and for me personally, it just didn't have that effect. But as I was reading it, I could totally see why some people would think that and would feel that way towards this book. So I think it's one of those things where it's just gonna click with some people and it's not gonna click with other people. And I think that's just totally fine. And for me, it just wasn't something revolutionary. There were concepts in it that I thought were really awesome and it definitely was interesting to read through it. But for me, I don't know, it just didn't quite hit me the same way that I thought it might. And the same way that I've heard other people say that it hit them. Obviously my faith probably has a lot to do with that because a lot of my like life choices, outlooks on life, perspective on life is based on my faith and like my faith really shapes my perspective on things and it was interesting because there are quite a few biblical concepts in this book even though they're not stated as biblical concepts so there actually were quite a few things that I really agreed with um, because they did align with my faith beliefs and like my perspective but there were also things that I didn't necessarily agree with because they don't really align with my faith but that's just gonna differ person to person depending on what your beliefs are. So I do think it is worth the read. I think it's like under 200 pages. Yeah, under 200 pages. So it's a very quick and easy read if you want it to be. I wouldn't say it's the most like interesting story. It's definitely one of those things that is supposed to just be kind of thought provoking rather than entertaining. But my neighbor is playing music so loudly. I think I'm going to end this video here. Today is the 3rd of Feb, I think. Yeah, so this is the first book that I finished in February. So I can add that to my book journal. If you guys want to see a wrap up of all of my January reads, I made a post on my reading Instagram, which is just at Rach Reads with two S's at the end. I have a list of all the books that I read and a one sentence review on them. And then if you want to head over to my TikTok, I also filmed like a little mini review on all of my January reads as well. I don't think I'm going to film a January wrap up video for YouTube this month, just because I had like other videos I wanted to do instead. But if you guys want to hear more in-depth reviews on any of the books I read in January, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll try and get back to you. But I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. I found it really fun to kind of just show you what I get through in a week. And I feel like I had quite a diverse range of books that I got through in the past week, which was really fun. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love talking books with you guys. You already know that. And I'm sure there will be many more book videos coming in the future. But I hope you guys have a great day or night whenever you're watching this. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.